Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Why will you not want to come to Jesus with this kind of provisions? Your destiny, your future, your eternity, everything is secured in Christ. This is why Satan fights the gospel. Please pay attention. This is why Satan will do anything to make sure your loved ones are not saved. This is why Satan will do anything to make sure that you do not rise this is why satan will do anything to make sure you don't have the prosperity it takes for your comfort and for the gospel can i tell you this um I, this is not to glorify satan but you see you need to study how visionary satan is there is nothing that he does that is for itself everything he does is connected to one big goal to stop the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same ask satan why do you fight prosperity that's the same reason why do you fight the bodies of men same reason why should the woman not have a child satan does not have any business with the child his concern is that anything captured in your life please pay attention anything captured in your life becomes satan's business if he finds out that there is potential in it to reveal Jesus and to glorify Jesus let me repeat that means Satan has no business with your job he has no business with your health he has no business with your children if he does not think there is something in need to bring glory to the name of the Lord the moment Satan finds out that there is something in your life that he suspects he doesn't have to wait for you to be born again he suspects that one day with this talent you have if you ever get born again he will not wait until you get born again he will begin to attack it satan is not motivated by many motivations there's something you can learn from him there is a singular motivation he's motivated by one agenda to stop the revelation of jesus christ and to stop the glorification of the same can i tell you this if god takes everything that can reveal him in us satan will pass you like this and you will beg him to come and you'll say no he will go to look for where next that glory went to so he's not just looking for you because of you if you don't understand what i'm teaching you will not even understand tonight's teaching at all Who have I offended that my life is like that? You will stop that kind of statement after a revelation like this. You see that now. Because listen, listen. I'm not saying those who say that are bad. But that's why you came to church. The church is a place of enlightenment. The condition for an attack is that there, when Satan finds out that you were created in the image and the likeness of God. As a baby, he pursued children. You are an adult satan pursued children who could not beg they could not talk they could only suck breast he said kill them don't wait until they grow every child was created in the image of god and i know that one day if that prophet and apostle and everybody arises we're in trouble and now you have become an adult you can use your will in partnership with the holy ghost he will not let you go easily ah but thanks be to god but thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph there will be no need for all the arsenals that are given to the believer to make for victory experientially if there was no adversary who is determined to destroy us the Bible says John chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for do you know what this means my goodness do you know that I've not even started well we're in church God is speaking 
if this is all i say we'll close our bible and discuss it next week but i have to drum this thing because this is how to grow are you getting blessed the thief cometh not just let's let's deal with those first four words that means you have no business seeing the thief if there is nothing that is worth stealing nothing that is worth killing nothing that is worth destroying you get the idea now that means the thief is so selfish if you ever see him he comes to you as a verification that there is something in your life that is worth stealing killing and destroying every time you see satan come around you he has already confirmed to you that you are not ordinary this is what the bible is saying hear me that means if without engaging the weapons of victory you are free from satan it means something is wrong with you your freedom should not come from any negotiation with him your freedom should come by superimposing dominion that means if satan sees you without engaging the weapons of victory he should attack you that is proof that you were created in the image of god There are many people who are not facing any attack because they are cold, they are lazy, they are unserious. They have checked you and found out that you don't have any relevance as far as kingdom comes is concerned. It's not because you are special, you are not praying, you are not fasting, you don't know the Lord, you are not serious and yet you are not attacked. Don't be flattered. The devil has found that he's focusing on those who can come and save you before he comes to you. I was glad when they said unto me you see that church is a good place it truly is please sit down so the thief cometh not but for to steal please give it to us again to kill and to destroy Jesus contrasts it and says I am come that they may have and they may have it more look up there is a difference between life and abundant life oh what is getting me into this thing this night life and abundant life listen carefully by the way well since this is koinonia let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of god is coming the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting there is it listen i won't say this anywhere this is this is home and god is training us are we together yes we must be thoroughly furnished sometimes i'm, I'm not i don't mean to insult you but but just listen to if if he's to laugh when he's laughable all of us know but some of these shout most times people who do these things are not getting it I'm saying most times not all the time and please don't feel bad I'm not I'm not this is a family no one condemns anyone but it's just a it's just an honest honest word of caution hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom through faith, subdued kingdom. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God bless you, Ma. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around. Where was I? I was cautioning. I was cautioning and, and calling for diligence as the word of God. Listen, two people acted this way in Jesus' days. Mary and Martha. Is it in your Bible? Remember the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning. Martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it. Mary sat quietly and was listening. Here's what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about so many things. But he says this one thing, one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet. Now please look up. Because it is true 
that this kingdom operates by knowledge number one because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God number three because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious and that formula is the Word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit in partnership with gifts men and women of God who he has sent are we together now yes that when God grants you access to a spiritual family God grants you access to spiritual voices God grants you access to scripture he grants you access to the Holy Spirit he has supplied to you the weapons of victory the men and the women of God interpret scripture they instruct you according to Jeremiah 3 15 in knowledge and in wisdom that is their assignment to feed you to give you that spiritual nourishment are we together so they give you understanding they give you knowledge the Word of God opens you up the Holy Spirit comes to back you among the many things that the Holy Spirit does he is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit what is the assignment of the anointing I have taught you here the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the Word of God does not look like a lie so if there is no word that proceeds the anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of Jesus as revealed in scripture so when the Bible says God heals now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true if God says I am able to lift men you see why the anointing follows the word this is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing there must be a statement that you must put on ground first something the Bible says should be done then the anointing you can beckon on the Holy Spirit now just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations and there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this why because they were not methodically discipled they were not methodically mentored hallelujah so everything that we share week in week out uh, among other factors spiritual arsenals that are equipping you why are they equipping you so that number one you have enlightenment knowledge but number two so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results why are your results important John chapter 15 and verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 this is why you need results in your life herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples why do you need results in your life Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 the Bible says you are the salt of the earth it says is that true the salt of the earth that means you add value and you preserve your territory you are salt you need that result it then says that you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world there are names that are exclusive to God alone man cannot claim that name but when it has to do with light both God and man are light there are names that he freely shares with us one of it is he is the son of God we are sons of God one of it is his light we are light Are we blessed do you know why I believe the Holy Spirit just took me this route because everything that we teach in this house by God's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned when you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth they, this is where carnality 
comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lust in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy but when it is brought in perspective then you see that jesus is glorified jesus is revealed hallelujah can we teach tonight now father open my eyes and let me see please lift your voice and pray for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I felt very strongly stirred. By the way, a series on the various graces, there's one more left on love but i suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of there is a grace that can cause men to love god and to love men it is a grace that is at work in this house and um but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming is that true tonight very briefly and then we'll pray i'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness please I pray that you pay attention this is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you your loved ones and those who are connected to you it is important that we learn the ways of God the Bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the Lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in christ everyone born of god and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in christ in hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general then said i lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god that means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes that everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as god God's predeterminate counsel is concerned. No one walking on the earth is useless. No one walking on the earth, regardless how you arrived here, provided you made it here, there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is very important. The Bible lets us know that in Christ, that we can have great destinies, and that greatness is the heritage of the saints not just godliness but greatness these are some of the benefits and the provisions that we have as sons in light the heritage of greatness is our birthright the heritage of greatness is God's desire for every single one of us are we together Philippians chapter 3 please let's read from verse 13 and 14 Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 lets us know we have a great destiny. I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I reach forth to those things that are before. Uh-huh. I press 
towards the mark of the price of the high calling apostle paul says that he has a high calling his calling is not an ordinary calling his calling is a high calling of god in christ jesus everyone say i have a high calling one more time say i have a high calling that means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned how about the heritage of greatness genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 it says and the man works great say amen, amen. and went forward say amen again amen. and grew until he became very great a version says and he began to be great that means there was a day he was not the man works great he went forward he grew until he became very great why because Isaac was coming from Abraham and there was that covenant of greatness Genesis 17 and verse 6 Genesis 17 and verse 6 our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny in Christ I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee say amen, amen. and kings shall come out of you amen. this is a promise now you see whilst you hear the Holy Spirit reveal this to you you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background and you're looking at where you're coming from you're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life and like nathaniel you can say about yourself like he said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth let's start the scripture in psalm 71 and verse 21 the bible even tells us that not only does god desire for us to be great but that the greatness is given us can still increase he says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side so we are examining the spiritual pathway haven't established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in christ we have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not anti-christ and anti-god for the saints in light to desire greatness because god put it in everyone to be great is that true hallelujah genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 this is the beginning of the encounter that abraham who was an idol worshiper from or of the chaldeans he would meet the god of the hebrews who would later become his god and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of jesus and even our redemption 12 verse 1 and 2 now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country from thy kindred from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you if you love jesus read verse 2 with me ready read and i will make of thee a great nation uh-huh and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing just stop there as at the time he was telling abraham this it had not yet happened to him this was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word are we together now so he's telling abraham i know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house your family but i have chosen to call you now when you study from scripture the first person that was called was not really abraham it was his father terah but the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing and now god comes to call abraham come out of your father's house come out of all of these places because this is what i want to do this is your destiny i want to make of thee a great nation i want to bless you i want to make your name great thou shall be a blessing in fact let's read verse 3 verse 3 please give it to us it says i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee there is a revelation here i want you to learn for every one person who curses you there are many them who blesses who bless you 
you see the ratio i will them that bless you him that curse you there are always more people willing to bless you and partner with god over your life than one person who may want to curse you so if the person in your village is one we are here the family is here the angels are here and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for abraham but paul gave us perspective in his pauline epistle that when god made this promise it was to abraham and his seed d that seed being christ and galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he told abraham through christ can become our reality you see the connection now it is from abraham through christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when i say greatness i don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of god but it is rest with respect to the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same he says and i if i be lifted from the earth i will draw all men is that true and i've shared with you that one of the ways that god gets glory is by glorifying the sons every father is glorified when his sons are glorified john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer and he said father the hour is come here is the protocol for god being glorified glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so if the sons are not glorified the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the Kedah has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the holy spirit is how the son is glorified and in the glorification of the son the father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and i'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um we just guess and shadow box our way and we are not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in Christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in our, our human context there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion 
and if they prepare and they do right the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the phase of discovery please pay attention the phase of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery and yet they want to be mightily used by god yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover God discovery God God Almighty that encounter with the God of the Bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but God the scriptural basis for this is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God that is the spiritual protocol Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the Bible in the beginning of anything you start with God in the beginning of business God in the beginning of ministry God in the beginning of marriage and a home God in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula you have compromised on greatness God's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them are we learning now in the beginning now most times people involve God but he does not take that first place we add him like you are putting salt in soup and we just add him go okay God so you don't harass me okay you are here no the protocol is that he must be the author otherwise he cannot be the finisher if he's not the author he will not be the finisher are we together now yes in the beginning God so you discover God we see this in the life of Moses I wish I had time but I want us to pray but just write for reference in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 Exodus chapter 3 the text for this is 1 to 15 but give us verse 13 for the sake of time the Bible tells us about this Hebrew boy who was saved from death and then he ran away from Egypt and was at the backside of the mountain tending Jethro his father in lordship ship and then he's open to an encounter before he discovered any other thing he discovered God the God of the Hebrews Moses said behold when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them the God of our fathers hath sent me to you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall I say unto them very good question and God said unto Moses Yahweh Wahey Yahweh I am that I am and he said thus shall you tell them it is true that they want to be delivered but this is what I desire I desire that they know me I am has sent you are we together so the first thing you have to discover is God most people don't pay attention to God can I tell you this 
in your spiritual training with God let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way god led us this is the way god led our fathers this is the way god led people from scripture when you meet god he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must take dedicated time to expose them to god everything god passion for god fire for god then when that foundation of god is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you're going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning god the first thing you discover is god number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered god you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are the nation of israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers god didn't say it satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers i'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles i live a life of favor i know i'm walking in power i live a life of favor very important you must know who you are we teach in our school of ministry and, and and there's a course where we teach the students who you are you know and I teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember I don't know what discussion we're having when I taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like bishop david oedipo will say to find out your picture from scripture to be able to find out this is what god has said concerning me this is who i am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the lord now you hear another voice added to that negativity by by teachers and all of that they look at you and say you are dull you are almost demonic i don't know how you got here i don't even know where you are going and i can tell you because you respect them you will believe it and then 
with every sense of respect and apology parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words causes and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture i am the beloved of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of god there are many names that the bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover god you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter five second kings chapter four please four i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee 
and he asks a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh as two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real Your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you. Thank God for the beauty, the glamour, the grace that is wonderful. But if you put your trust in anything outside you, you are insecure. Can I tell you, most of the things that we face in our world today, especially as it makes for interpersonal relationships and all of that, they are a derivative of this secret frustration. Psychologists have said it and have taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value. If you feel you are not valuable, you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration. If you are a happy man, the world is a happy place for you. If you are a sad person, the world is a sad place for you. If you are a godly person, in the midst of all the decadence that goes on, you can see God, you can see what he is doing. If you are someone who is a failure, you would look at life from the lens of your experience. What sees thou? It's a, it's a report card. Is God speaking to us tonight? So the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what god already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials i first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death 
Dr. Miles Monroe, when I read his book on discovering your potentials, when he said, here's what he said, that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-Saharan Africa around, it's not, it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and Iraq and all of that. He said the most expensive, the wealthiest place on earth he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can i tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not robert Lerden that wrote one book god's generals that set fire today only god knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively. And he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your house? It is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take in intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny can I tell you this Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that God gave them to be able to serve the purposes of God today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before Pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of God it was the rod God gave Moses that was used to prove the almightiness of God if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that God is mighty over you you must obtain grace from God seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever TV station there are people listening to me you have dreams God has planted things in your life can I tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby jesus as the son of god did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery 
pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of god's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effectively serving them with your gift is what we call greatness it appears as honor it has appears as priority living it appears as whatever it is but the truth is that when you use this that god has given you you discover it you have begun your journey to greatness let me do a quick recap and we move forward that there are two main phases when it has to do with manifesting greatness in the kingdom the first um, season is called the season of preparation and i'm now defining the activities that happen under that season that that season of preparation is broken into three phases phase one is discovery you discover god you discover you you discover what he has given you say amen, amen. the second thing that you do in the second phase under preparation is called development the phase of development now that you have discovered God now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what God has given you look up please Miles Monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form it means that there is value that can be derived from it but not at that state for instance we celebrate and we thank God for the gift of crude oil in this country but if you happen to go and watch them mine oil when oil actually comes out and you see it you will run away from that place because it's a dark slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus 
there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great he didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in jesus without the mind that was in jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can i tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems i have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adult you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their God knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart 
the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from god to sit down dear nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from god but apostle i went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge challenge yourself to be enlightened and don't let the devil make you think that what i'm sharing tonight is not important it is absolutely important the destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness it is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself there are people who will eat from the fruit of your greatness are we together so discovery and then refining when you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing write it down the season of testing oh dear i wish i had time the season of testing 
can i tell you this if it is god you are doing business with before he commits to you destinies before he commits to you anointings and graces you must be tested genesis 22 please from verse 1 we're still looking at the life of abraham and it came to pass after these things remember genesis 12 abraham has an encounter with god he begins his journey 10 chapters later we see him stepping into the next phase it came to pass after these things that god did what tempt some verses will say test abraham what was the test abraham he said behold i am here next verse please he said take now thy son thy only son isaac whom thou lovest take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you verse 3 here's what the bible says and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place which god had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this god tells abraham i want to make you a father of nations i will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in thee shall all the families be blessed in other words i'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to abraham are we together now and then abraham did not know that as he kept obeying god transiting he would get to a point where god will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is god who is lifting you he will stretch you from pillar to post man of god let me tell you what he will do to you as a great man on fire god loving you your pastor just looks at you and says you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church you look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these 10 testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you will know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way 
I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace. Especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you. Maybe someone is in that phase right now. Listen carefully. I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you, do it with all your heart. You do not know what season you are stepping into. Are we together? Go and ask many great men. Do you know what Stephen was doing before he became that mighty man? Stephen was part of those who were serving tables. There are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their CEOs. And while they were scrubbing the floors, they would hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things. While their contemporaries were saying, I'm too big, they were saying, no, 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 I love the Lord. Father, it's a privilege for me to do what I'm doing. The moment you are too big to be tested, you are also too big to be great or too small to be great. I have told God and I told God this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that I have to do is in the name of the Lord and I'm serving you I will do it with all my heart I stand before the God of heaven and I'm telling you now if the Lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher even in Koinonia here I stand by the God of heaven I will do it I know you think I'm not all right but I will do it it's better to be wrong with God. Let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you. The moment what you were doing before, you now become too big to do it. Check yourself. Go for a retreat quickly. Some of us as it is today, if you hold a broom, you will be sick. May God forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, can I be honest with you? One of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life, disengage yourself with certain privileges, even if it's for a day, and you go back to the things you used to do. They will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced. Because you see, as you rise, there will be people to serve you, protocol. You see me coming in and you see all these, my people, everything. And some of you, this is what you are looking at. When you look at all these things, say, oh God, I must be like Joshua Selman, not his prayer life, not his word life. What you want is this one. And God says, you lie. I'm not, I'm not, you don't cheat me like that. You go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like God is not even answering your prayer I've taught you here as a man of God you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusade and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says i'm disappointed i was told so much about you uh, i i i thought and you say me and god says keep quiet tell him god bless you you say god bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say god what is the name of all these things god will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you of the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people are bought destiny and are bought greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do Believe what I'm telling you. For many years in my life, I wanted to buy a car, but God prohibited me. This is true. And at a point I said, what is all this one now? 
a car that will help me is still this gospel thing the making of the great is painful you are not the only one apostle you don't know what is happening to me you think so how do you think everybody who got here got here it looks you see that season makes it painful and you think it's only you this is why mentorship is powerful because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness like kung fu masters they laugh at you they say just continue continue you will get here god can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till 4 you are praying and you say god for what i thought you said i'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier god trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say god confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text god will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can i tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test i'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now i tell you lift up your eyes look beyond the pain your salvation is near test apostle god is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire huh. He will not ask you to open an account. He will ask you to empty everything in your account. Only God knows how many times. That is the test. I know you will cast that voice. You say, no, God doesn't work like that. I am telling you, he works like that. There is a way that God works like that. There are demons, yes. But there is a way that God works. You must give everything. I've taught you that the price for all of God is all of you. God will wait until they pay you arrears for one year he will not wait until they give you a seed it's easy when they touch you money but god will wait until they pay you your arrears and you say take that isaac go to a mountain he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of god is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when i tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross i'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help those under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing are you getting what i'm saying now you can get a job of two hundred thousand and a job of eighty thousand and god can tell you go for the job of eighty thousand you say god do you know that i'm taking care of four people he says just go there now you see what i'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness sometimes you just learn that oh i i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm joking but i'm not what i'm saying is very serious and i tell you there are no exceptions to it swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn is at work in you changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says though weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay 
Lord, this fast, I'm fasting as if I don't even know whether I'm touching my stomach or my back. Just fast. It doesn't kill. There are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying, Lord, is it that I'm a pastor? Just encourage me. By God says, what you are is not your business. You just know that you are a child of God and I'm making you become something. If you want to claim the blessings of Abraham, be ready to carry Isaac to that mountain. We live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices. Anybody that you know who has become great today, find out what they did. There is always a season of preparation. If you see anybody who breaks that rule, run away from them. They have nothing to offer you. I, have, I tell you sincerely, if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with God, there is not much to offer. I've cried in my life, oh. You see me smiling all the time. I'm only smiling before you. Ask God. Ah, the burden of this ministry. The first time we organized crusade as a ministry, then just starting, we didn't even have money to pay the transport fare. Brothers and sisters, this our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process. Please don't feel insulted. I'm only stressing this because I want to pound it into your spirit. Behind every throne you see, behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people no I've had the honor and the privilege of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation. I tell you sometimes when you look at them, you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground. Their entire lives have become a drink offering. Before, even business people, before you admire people, you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed. You want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and god honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to jesus and said can you grant that when you are exalted we will sit at your left and right he said the space is available but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized listen moses was a man who had been trained by the holy spirit do you know moses was a stammerer and yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying and he was quiet he didn't prophesy when the anointing on him came on 70 elders not children a part of it oh, none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you say, people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do. One day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you. After you have preached and said, there is nothing my God cannot do. You will feel as if his headache, whether it's from the back of your head or the front, you may not be able to explain. 
and like Paul you will lay your hands I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references I'm hurrying up I besought him thrice that this thorn be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything he was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life uneasy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of god hear me everything god told you he will still do that man of god that woman of god you are you don't look like it the bible says it does not yet appear just stay with god just stay with god dear ceo it's true that god called you you put your hands in your pocket the only thing you touch is the end of your pocket don't worry it is true you are a kingdom financier it will not come the way you think it will happen you are still in the school of the spirit can i tell you this don't be ashamed of your tears cry but stay whatsoever he tells you to do do it let's hurry up so we can pray When you are done with the season of preparation then you are open to the next season of your life it's called the season of manifestation oh hallelujah when you get to that season when you get to that season called the season of manifestation hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Please read with me, everyone. One to read. And so, after he had what? He obtained the promise. One more time, everyone, please. And so, continuation to the story. After he had patiently endured. Endured what? The mockery. Endured what? The shame. Endured what? The pain. Endured what? The ridicule. As Noah, when he was building the ark, there were people who were laughing and saying, this man, only God knows what you had. For 120 years, he was building that ark. But a season would come called a season of manifestation. If you cannot patiently endure, there is no promise. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Your season of appearing is when God opens the curtain of your destiny and you are ready to stand on the stage of life. Can I tell you, the season of appearing happens so fast, it will surprise you. There has never been a slow, there, is, there are faces to it. There are three faces to your season of appearing, but it can happen instantly. Look at Joseph. Joseph is in the prison, not knowing that by the next day, by that same time, he would be the prime minister. the disciples were tarrying do you know the frustration of tarrying 120 people just waiting i'm sure somebody will say ah what is so special about the holy ghost that he has not come and they say keep quiet don't don't offend the lord just do what he asks you to do listen to what i'm telling you can i tell you this there is a mysterious way god designed the season of appearing it has indicators but you will never know the exact moment you just keep being faithful you don't know that by the next day you are going to get a job by the next day the business proposal that you have written you may never know oh Saul that you are one day left to meet Samuel when Saul left his father's house at a point they were tired they said let's go back he said no we can't go back we have come too far the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue let's finish up there is a seer and as soon as they went by the gates they met this mysterious man 
called Samuel. Samuel laughed. He said, go up. I will come and tell you what is in your heart. You will get up one morning thinking it will be like any other day and God will position someone. You do not know that you have just wrapped up your season of training. I can tell you this. How do you know your season of training has come to an end? God himself defines the moment for you. But I tell you this, for everyone who ended seasons, a man was there to lift his hands. If you are Joseph, Pharaoh is there. If you are Saul, Samuel is there. For as long as you have not seen your Samuel, keep moving. For as long as you have not seen Pharaoh, Joseph, keep interpreting the dreams for free. A day will come, you will interpret it and it will not be for free again. But qualify. Do it for the wine presser for free. Do it for the baker for free. Let the wine presser forget you for two years. It's still a test. Because one night, Pharaoh will send for you. And on that day, you will not interpret for free again. Why will Joseph interpret a dream for free? Interpret this for free and even beg the man and say, please, if you get to Pharaoh, tell him I am innocent. And he forgot. But when the moment was come, every night Jesus kept teaching them and telling them the promise of the Spirit is coming. They waited and waited and waited for 50 days after he ascended. But the Bible says now, Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, we're praying now. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, it says they were gathered with one accord. Verse 2, please read with me the first two words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. This is how the season of appearance happens. And suddenly he got the job and suddenly the mantle of his destiny came upon him and suddenly the woman got pregnant after 30 years and suddenly god opened the door and suddenly the ministry began to blossom listen to me i can tell you this you know you are in your season of appearing because suddenly things just change with speed you look back and say how did this happen when the lord turned again the captivity of zion the bible says we were like them that dream when the lord began to open doors of ministry for me when the lord began to show me his mercy on that wise it came with such level of speed i could no longer accommodate my schedules what is this new thing that is happening to me it's as if a curtain just opened everywhere joshua selman i know how seasons of greatness comes but can i tell you this while you wait cry but wait keep doing what he's asking you to do you sow the seed like a fool and you are sitting down and god can i tell you this nobody has exhausted his season yet the moment you get to that season of appearing then the the next level starts with the same cycle again preparation and then manifestation then the next cycle of the next realm preparation you don't exhaust it look at our father in the lord bishop david Oedipo, when he was building the the faith tabernacle oh did he know another one was coming when Baba Deboe was building the old crown of redeem, that one is a miracle already. That is somebody's prayer point in many lifetimes. But after enduring, God now told him, build three kilometers by three kilometers. Next instruction. I remember those days in the ministry, we used to sit on the ground on mats. And then the days of Zaria, and then now he's brought us into the city only god knows how many episodes of this greatness will happen in our lifetime that is why it's dangerous to over celebrate realms they would distract you there is a healthy way to celebrate and prepare because every time you attain a manifestation of a realm the preparation for the next realm should start immediately this is how champions live champions never plateau champions never rest as soon as they pat their back they know that you are beginning another circle 
listen to what i'm telling you some of you this is the reason why you rose up in ministry you rose up in your finances as soon as you made 1 million 10 million 100 million you just plateaued and say ah my soul find rest no you look at our fathers in the lord today it's as if they are just starting ministry i returned back from enugu and i was seeing the posters of our father baba kumuyi everywhere i said at this age this man is still traveling and holding crusades as if he's trying to gain visibility please huh? let me give you an advice when people clap for you sustain the courage to tell them is enough because i'm already focusing on the training for the next season let me wrap up we're going to pray give us mark chapter 4 from verse 26 let me show you the three levels of stepping into your season of appearing mark chapter 4 from verse 26 please look up everybody never forget this spiritual formula we're about to pray and he said so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast seed where into the ground 27 and should sleep <laughs> and rise up night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not is it in your bible there now here is the progression for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself now when it has to do with bringing forth fruit three levels first the blade then the air after that the full-blown corn in the air when you begin to step into seasons of greatness everything will not happen at once there are levels first the air you will begin to see God honor you there are politicians today for instance who started as local government chairman when they won they celebrated and God told them be careful don't stop here there is still another height and then maybe they went to state house of assembly and so on and so forth and many are still on their way transiting there are business people I remember for some of you here you will sit down and tell yourself ah I just made one million and one million will look like forever for you you are happy coming from your background this is a miracle and God says celebrate but a day will come you will be feeding nations a day will come you will sign a million dollars two million dollars and give nations and they will ask you how did it feel the first day you say i still can't remember it was pastor nathaniel bassi dear friend and brother who was sharing about the things that were happening to him that a time came in this nation when he was under his late pastor nobody knew anything about him there are footballers who suffered as if God did not call them. Every club side pushed them away and they kept enduring. And when their season came, just one person looked at them and said, come. And that was it. They never returned again. We are going to pray. Let me share with you a story. Many years ago, I went to a place called Premier Hotel in Ibadan. When I went there, um, it was night and I didn't even have the money to pay for any place for accommodation. And I'm telling you, I said, God, what is this? I entered the place, looked around, you know, wonderful place. And I was seeing people and I could not pay for the place. I could not even pay for any place. Looking around, I was just hanging around. I couldn't hang out in inside so i was outside and then eventually i made up my mind i said i can't stay like this till morning there was a church somewhere i trekked and i found a church that was doing night vigil i joined them to do that vigil so that i don't waste there's no need wasting time i tell you this and then a few years later i would go to preach within that region and right from i think it was from the airport or so i can't remember the whole story now i saw people greeting me protocol people with cars and they were leading me to my place of stay guess where they took me when i saw myself climbing that hill tears filled my eyes and i said oh god 
only a fool says there is no God when they dropped me there they took me to their highest suit and I was there I usually travel with my people and they were outside they were swimming there was a program in the evening you know but these guys were swimming playing table tennis and I was watching them from that place I said it's not your fault my dear people They were happy enjoying themselves by the pool and I was watching I said oh dear but what if be because of what happened at that moment I said you know what this ministry will just fold it that's all do you know how many people are cheering you in the spirit and saying for our sake don't give up we have been waiting for you do you know how many unborn children who are saying doctor you will be the consultant who will deliver me or oh, in case it's cs make sure you keep giving your best do you know how many people who are saying businessman it is your scholarship that is going to raise me to have an encounter don't give up there are nameless faces in the spirit joining the angels to say you have come too far you have come too far apostle you don't know how many times i've failed do not worry there is something called failing forward look up if you enter a plane and the plane is moving and you go back to the back seat are you going backward is the plane moving forward even though inside the plane you are moving back overall are you going backward that's what we call failing forward there is failure as an event there is failure as a person I'm speaking here tonight to a man of God who went for a crusade saying god called you and you went there nobody was healed only one person was saved the people said don't ever tell us god called you again and you return back wondering or a prophet who prophesied 10 cases you got zero you didn't everything you saw was wrong and you are wondering lord did you really call me what of a businessman who five businesses you lost money you failed completely i bring you words of comfort in this kingdom there is something called the season of preparation and the season of appearing during your season of preparation you discover God you discover you you discover that rod that you will be using to do mighty things for the kingdom can I tell you this no matter how many times you fall don't throw that rod that is the rod that you will part the Red Sea with make sure by the time you get to the Red Sea you don't get there alone get there with your rod your rod can be your voice your rod can be your hands your rod can be your brain your rod can be your character everything that can help you today we thank god for the privilege of this rod he has so trained us to hold it was once the rod of moses but when he handed it over to god it became the rod of god never call the rod of moses again it is called the voice of you but when you hand it over to God, it's now called the voice of God. It will now sing songs that will go around the world. It will now preach messages that will go around the world. Be careful when you laugh at people who are in their seasons of training. You may be laughing at your destiny helper and bury your head in shame forever. There are people who laughed at young people thinking they will never rise. There are people who laughed at business people. Can, can I tell you this? Sometimes God allows people to witness your failure so that they will be the defenders of your greatness. They will say, no, 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 no. I saw this man of God. I knew when he held a crusade that nobody was there. I saw this business person. I, my mother even gave him 20 naira. Don't be ashamed of your season of tears. The scar on your hand today, you've heard me say it. What you are ashamed of today will become your symbol of honor tomorrow. Are you ready to pray? Let's stop here tonight. Please rise up on your feet. Please, no moving around. Lend me two or three minutes. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. You are going to lift up your voice in the next two or three minutes and you are going to cry before the God of heaven. You are going to tell him, Lord, I am in my season of preparation. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Lift your voice and pray. If someone pray, grant me grace to discover you.
some of you are just starting in destiny god may not be talking to you about purpose god may not be talking to you about ministry he may not be talking to you about your assignment he will talk to you about himself he wants you to know him not your talent god first lift your voice and pray cry before the lord your maker in the beginning god over my life so what will start as a ministry starts as an encounter with god what will start as a kingdom financing ministry will still start as god what will start as a kingdom political career still starts as god everything no matter what it is if it is in its beginning it is god pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline grant me the diligence may i not pamper myself may i not pamper my destiny let pain not be a a, a, a distraction let pain not constitute a limitation grant me the grace to endure like a faithful soldier building building my mind building my gifts building my mind building my value building my mind building my value if someone pray building my mind building my value this is a template that our fathers followed this is a template that our fathers gave us this is a template that scripture gives us we cannot compromise on the pattern pray for the season of tests oh that when god will prove me may i be faithful that when god will prove me may i have the stamina to remain ye who have continued with me ye who have continued with destiny i will finish my season of training with honor with nobility 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 hallelujah hear me now you are going to pray for sensitivity so that you will not be missing on the day the grace for appearance comes may it find you where god asks you to stay listen the devil can cheat you through offense the devil can cheat you through impatience the devil can cheat you through the manipulation of demonic spirits to not be where the grace for your season of appearance will find you i like you to pray and cry for grace sensitivity oh god to be where my lifting will meet me is someone pray Go ahead, please pray. Shapakatoskiata. This is a spiritual strategy for greatness. This is a spiritual strategy in this kingdom. There is no magic about how we rise. This is the protocol non emotional, non negotiable, non emotional, non negotiable. I obtain grace. To be sensitive to the man that god will send when my season of appearing comes i will be sensitive to the instructions that come hallelujah hallelujah listen to me some of you before that season comes prepare your cv and keep it waiting 
so that if they ask for it in two minutes you can send what betides a man when your helpers call you say i'm not yet prepared that was a mistake of the five foolish virgins they were all virgins but what made some wise and foolish was some carried extra oil it was time the longevity of the time was what separated them just because you are among the virgins does not mean you will see the groomsman five carried extra oil they said peradventure we are stretched beyond time we will stay from this oil and the others did not and even though the bible still respects the fact that they were virgins it said they were foolish virgins so while you are praying sometimes the prayer you are praying is not for ministry again it's for the days when you will need to stand alone there are extra things god is giving you don't throw them away don't throw the extra oil there are them that sell if you don't see them on time the bible says when they went to buy there was a lamentation behold the bridegroom the season of appearing is come and they, they say everybody got up they lit their lamp and for others the oil was not there and they said sorry even though you have waited this long you have still missed the season go to them that sell and buy that means you can buy on time because in any case you will still buy be sure that you don't buy too late buy when you are young buy before children come buy before responsibilities come buy before preaching engagements occupy you buy oil buy lamb buy before your fame goes away build character build grace build stamina that's buying the oil hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching